Hello people and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Okay guys, got a video here from Crypto Eri and uh it's in regards to an interview with David Schwartz and um I wanted to share this with you guys because I think it's something that we all should see as XRP holders and I'm going to be honest with you. Um uh, it's going to break a few hearts. It really is. And I'll be honest with you, it kind of broke my heart a bit when I saw it. So um you know it's a bit of a tough listen, but it's something that we need to know as XRP holders. Like this is, this is the kind of, uh, tough love that we need to have, right? And so, um, I'm going to get into this shortly, but you know, like uh, when I looked at the post, I saw that there was someone who had dropped a comment on the video and said, you know, watch when this video comes out. You know, all the influencers will be crickets. No one will touch it. And although I don't really like to refer to myself as an influencer, because I don't really think I'm trying to influence you guys to do anything. I'm just sharing my opinion. Um, I always knew I was going to touch this as soon as I saw it. I, I knew, I knew straight away that I was going to do a video on this. I knew, you know, as soon as I saw it, I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have my say on this. Um, and I do have to say, like, I, I do agree with that comment though. You know, there will be a lot of influencers for want of a better word, who they just won't touch this. They'll just act like it never existed, you know. And the reason why I'm showing you this is, again, like I've been pushing this for, uh, you know, the, the inception of my channel. Like, you've got all these influencers saying certain things about XRP, but you've got the truth here coming from the horse's mouth. So what do you want to do? Do you want to go with the influencers who are just, you know, making wild speculations or do you want to go with a guy who actually created XRP and is the CTO in Ripple, right? Like, I just think sometimes we have to like, you know, just be open-minded to the truth. That's all. But um, yeah, let's, let's get into this because uh, I think it's time to, you know, really break this down. And I will just say this from the beginning, this isn't all doom and gloom. Do I think this is the end of Ripple and XRP? No, I don't. And I'll specify my reasons as to why I think that uh, as we get a bit further into the video. But um, I want to go through this first so I can explain what the deal is here. So this interview, um, it's about like 24, 25 minutes long, something like that. But to me, there was really just one important part of the whole thing that there was one part that just really caught my whole attention, you know, out of everything. And Eri puts it at the very beginning of the video. So, you know, it, you kind of can hear it straight away within like the first like 60 seconds or something like that. So let's get into it. Um, I've got the notes down of what he actually says. So David Short says, and this is when he's just talking about basically ODL, like banks and stuff like that, right? So he said, it's very sexy when we close a deal with a bank and we do that sometimes, but they're very slow movers. They're very conservative and they're slow to execute. They're never going to be Ripple's success story. And it's hard to get them to push the benefits down to their customers because it's risky for them and it highlights where they're inefficient. They focused on banks at first because they felt it looked good for all at the press release. But after that, they actually wanted to start moving money, but the banks didn't want to do that. So like generally for the most part, I've, I've kind of said that exactly how it was said, but towards the end, I've, I've kind of paraphrased just a little bit, as you can tell, because I'm talking more from like my own perspective rather than David Schwartz. Um, but let's like elaborate on what he's saying here, because this is, this is a big deal, guys. It is. So what he's saying here is that, okay. Yes, they do get partnerships with banks, right? But he's saying that basically they're not really wanting to just adopt the technology yet to that degree. You know, they're not just wanting to just move from their prior old system over to RippleNet or XRP, right? And I, I said this before, guys. I said, look, like when it comes to this kind of technology, this isn't something that's just going to happen overnight. This kind of stuff is like things that take like years to really come through. When you look at crypto technology now, Bitcoin came out in 2009. We've not even got regulations yet. And we're in 2024. And now to a lot of people that might sound like, oh, well, look how long it's been. Yes, that is a case that you could argue. But at the same time, when it's something that's going to change the whole world and industries for the better, like forever, 
this is still very early. Like when you think about the internet, right? When the internet first came out, it was completely different to what the internet is now. And when the internet first came out, a lot of people didn't want to adapt to the internet. You know, a lot of people thought the internet was going to be a fad. Like there's an article. I've got it on my phone. Um, and it's basically like a newspaper article and it's saying like, oh, you know, uh, it's believed that the internet is just going to be a fad as there's only like a hundred users a daily on the internet or something like that. It's something crazy like that. And you think of that now. And you just laugh, right? Because like the internet, we, we probably wouldn't even be able to exist without the internet at this point now. If the internet just went down tomorrow and everybody lost the internet, oh my God, I think there'd be an absolute like meltdown in the world. There'd be absolute chaos. So, you know, this is what I mean. Like people look at crypto right now. They think it's a fad. They call it the magic internet money, blah, blah, blah. They just haven't got the foresight to think of what this can actually do. And they haven't done enough research to understand the benefits that come with crypto technology, right? And so I'm not surprised to hear that in that regard. But to me, it's when he said it's not going to be Ripple's success story. Because let's be real, a lot of us who, you know, are invested in XRP, one of the things that we look to is cross-border payments. And we've got here David Schwartz saying, look, the banks are not going to be the success story of Ripple. So to me, what that's really essentially saying is that ODL isn't really going to be Ripple's primary uh, use case for XRP. That, that's what it sounds like to me. And you can kind of get the gist of that from what? The stablecoin coming out. Also, them starting to look at RWA tokenization, right? Like they're looking at other things. They're pivoting. And I, I said this before, like David Schwartz was in a um, a space on X. And I said this, like he he... This came out of his mouth. He said, cross-border payments didn't really take off the way we'd hoped. So we had to start looking at other ways to, you know, expand the business. So, like, these are things that he said in the past. These are all things that he has actually said. And so, look, do I think this is the end in terms of XRP? No, I don't. Why? Well, for the same reasons that I've just said earlier. The stablecoin, RWA tokenization, uh, they're trying to think about implementing smart contracts. Like there's other factors that can make XRP good other than just cross border payments. But it's funny because literally, I can't remember how long ago it was now, but it really wasn't that long ago. I had a video where I was talking about this and I was saying, we need to stop just solely focusing on just cross border payments because there's so many other factors that can bring value to XRP. And so I'm not really concerned in terms of thinking it's like, oh, this is it, XRP is dead. No, but does this kind of impact its trajectory? Yeah, I, I would say so because, you know, that was one of the main use cases for XRP. And it's not to say that it's failed. I just don't know if this is really going to be one of the bigger drivers of value anymore, you know. And I do think that Ripple will continue to push for it. I think they will continue to hope that, you know, the banks will come around at some point. But what I'm getting from David here is that it, it just doesn't seem like they want to push the button in terms of like really going full force to try and adopt the technology. That That's what it seems to me from what he's saying. Um, and so he's basically saying, look, like, you know, we want to do this stuff, but you know, they're, they're very, they're, they're very slow to react. They don't really want to do it. Like they're very apprehensive. And to be honest with you, to a certain degree, I do actually understand it. To be honest with you, um, you know, you got to think with these banks, like these are like, for one, they're dinosaurs, right? They're used to what they used to. They know what works. So they're just like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously this technology can vastly improve the services but at the end of the day um is it really going to be something that they are convinced is going to work because they might be thinking well what if we change it over and then something goes wrong you know that could be a lot of headache for us right so these are like the kind of worries that they're probably having and then also just another point is you know what they said about um highlighting the banks inefficiencies right because this is one of the things that he talks about and this you know, this is stuff that I, I'll be honest, with you, I didn't even think about this myself, but when he's saying it, I'm like, it makes complete sense. He said, look, let's just say something was to happen to Ripple. Well, 
what would the banks do then in terms of telling their customers, right? Like imagine they have to say, oh, okay, well, that uh, service that we used to provide to you, you know, RippleNet, uh, well, that company's gone now. They've ceased to exist for whatever reason. So we can no longer provide that service. Do you see what I'm saying? Or even just in regards to like how they might be able to do RippleNet for certain types of payments, but they might not be able to do RippleNet for other types of payments, right? Like for example, with ODL, it's all about corridors, right? So you know, David Schwartz said this in the interview, like some corridors, it's not really economically efficient for them to use XRP. So it might be a thing where for some transfers, they can say, yeah, we can do this transfer instantly for a few cents, you know, or, oh no, sorry, this one, uh, you're going to, you're going to have to spend $30 and it's going to take three to five days for it to go through. Do you see what I'm saying? So like, there's all these factors that come into play as to why the banks are going to be apprehensive as to why they want to do this and to be honest with you some of these points they do make sense as much as i don't like it because i'm an xrp holder like i do understand some of these points i do think it is a thing more than anything that them just being afraid to like take that that leap and that is always the way when it comes to new technology and to a degree again as i say i do understand it because when you've got something that's tried and tested it's hard to want to go to something that you know could really um you know, if it goes wrong, you could really mess up the banking system because, you know, they've been reliant on this uh, age old system for many, many years. Um, and they'll be like, well, what do we do if it goes wrong? So even though XRP is tried and tested, you know, there are going to be a lot of apprehension coming with this kind of stuff. And, it, you know, it's exactly the same for the Internet, guys. Like this is the way it is when things come through. Um, into this type of magnitude, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It just doesn't, guys. So. I'm not really that surprised to hear about this, but um, I, I didn't think it was going to be um, as dramatic as what it sounds here. And that's not like, I don't want me to make it sound dramatic either because I don't think this is David Schwartz saying that XRP and ODL has failed. I don't I don't believe he's saying that. I think all that he's saying is that he believes it's going to take longer than they originally anticipated. And I think David Schwartz is in a position now where it's like, well, we don't really just want to sit around here waiting for the banks to finally have the day where they say, yes, let's fully go with XRP. Let's start utilizing it properly. I think he's thinking, well, how many years could we be waiting for that? So, you know, at this point, it's like, well, what do we do? Well, we start looking at other things, right? We start looking at other use cases that we can use XRP for. And so this is why when I was talking earlier, I said that I'm ultimately not really concerned about this because when it's all said and done, You've still got the stable coin. You've still got RWA tokenization. Um, they could be looking at smart contract functionality. Like there's still all these other things that they can do that will also bring, uh, value to XRP. So it's not like this is the be all and end all, but I will just admit that this is a real big factor of one of the things that, you know, got people interested into XRP. And so when I look at it from that perspective, I have to think, okay, yes, I do believe that ODL can still be a success, but it's like, how many years could we be talking for that to really get to that position, right? And so for me, like just full transparency, the way I'm just viewing this now is I'm not selling my XRP because I, I don't really think this is like the, oh my God, the sky is falling moment. I, don't, I really don't think that. But I do have to admit, I am really thinking a bit differently in terms of like, my strategy within this bull market now. My intention originally was that I am going to sell some XRP, but I wasn't 100% sure how much XRP I was going to sell. And uh, I was kind of coming to the conclusion of about half of my XRP. And I have to be honest now, I, I don't know if maybe I might sell more. Now, I don't think I'll sell all of it because I am willing to keep some for a long-term play. But I don't know. Like I think my thing is, even if I was to sell more and then reinvest back in, at a later date like you know i'm not saying that once i sell that's it i'm completely out of xrp as i say i'm going to keep some for a long-term play and i'm willing to reaccumulate when the bear market comes back in so i'm not saying like i'm just out of xrp completely i just think i'm looking at my strategy and deciding how i'm going to go with this but i'm not out of xrp like i'm not selling my xrp right now i'm not thinking like this is it now xrp is now useless or anything like that but you know this does impact the time frame of what you're thinking for XRP to, you know, really gain um, its value when it comes to ODL, when it comes to Ripple payments. You know, it does just make us look at this just a little bit differently. And, you know, for me, 
what I want to see is like, what influences are going to touch this video? You know, because I'm covering it. You know, I'm playing my part. So let's see, is there any other influencers who, you know, do this video, who cover this? Because I'd be interested to see what they have to say. I get the feeling it's going to be very minimal. But this is why I say to you guys, you need to be careful with who you're getting your content from because you've got this guy here telling you the truth. And, you know, you've got these influencers who speculate, but you've got here the creator of XRP and the CTO of Ripple. And he's telling you, yes, you know, banks are not going to be the success story of Ripple. So yeah, like, did that hurt a bit to hear? Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I'm an XRP holder. And this was one of the biggest things that drew me into it was the whole cross-border factor of it. Um, like I've said, I've always said, don't just focus on just Ripple, focus on other developers too, because they're also helping to bring value. And I've also said, don't just focus on cross-border payments. Um, so that's why, like, to me, it's like, Yes, this was a bit of a hit to me, but I don't think it's going to hit me the same way it's hit others because I've never just been thinking one track minded when it comes to XRP. I've never just been thinking about just cross border payments. But I think for the people who are talking about, you know, XRP going to like $10,000 and stuff like that, I feel like that's going to kind of rain on their parade a little bit. You know, I think they're going to be having a bit of a hard time when they hear all this. Um, but to me, I think it's necessary to hear these things. Like I've said this before, I'm all just about the truth. You know, I don't duck from these types of interviews or David Short saying this kind of stuff. I take it head on because I want to be fully informed. When I'm investing money, like I, I want to know the good and the bad because if there's something bad, I, I don't want to bury my head in the sand. I don't want to just ignore it. I want to know because if I need to get my money out, then I can do that. So as I say, rest assured, I'm not jumping out of XRP right now. But yeah, like it, it is a bit of a, a bit of a bummer because it does impact their trajectory, right? Like it does have a, a bit of a impact on where, you know, they're going to go within the next, like, let's say one to five years. Cause maybe ODL may take longer than that, possibly, you know, who knows? But overall, um, uh, this is a good interview. So I do recommend you watch it. Um, I've shown you the, like, the main part, really, to be honest with you. This was the real bombshell moment of the whole thing. But um, it is a good interview anyway, to be honest. And, um, you know, you get an update about Ripple and what they're doing. So even from that perspective, it's good. But um, as I've always said to you guys, just be careful who you're getting your content from. Some guys are just spinning you a line. And, you know, they, they know they are. But they're doing it because it gets engagement. So... I think this is a good video for all the XRP community to see. I think it's something that they need to hear. And, you know, like, let's just start trying to live in reality here, guys. Let's, you know, come down from the clouds a little bit and, you know, be a bit more grounded. You know, this doesn't mean that XRP can't succeed. It doesn't. There's other avenues, but maybe we just need to not focus so much on, you know, cross-border payments because maybe that's going to take a bit longer to really see the success through that so i'll leave it there guys but if you want to check it out it's on crypto aries uh channel uh it's called sexy bank deals ripple story so have a look um and let me know what you think you know let me know what you think because i think this is something that should really get a lot of traction because it's important it really is so fingers crossed it does you know get the the true um exposure it deserves because I just want people to have the truth out there. But what do you guys think? David Schwartz on the truth about ODL. Let me know your thoughts, guys. I'd be interested to hear. Thank you very much for watching this. If you did like it, please remember to drop a comment, like, and subscribe. But until next time, take care.